Hey everyone and welcome back to Just Finish Coding. In this new series, I'll teach you how to build the famous Chrome Dino game. That's right, we will be building up this entire game mechanic, including obstacles, jumps, birds, the night mode, the scenery, all in scratch. Now, to make things easier for you, I have compiled a starter file containing all the game assets and sound effects. You can find it linked in the description box below. Just download it and load it into Scratch and you should be good to go. So in this video, we'll focus on creating a path for the player and handling the jumping mechanism. These will be the foundations which we will build up in later parts. In the starter file, you should see the dino and the flow sprite shown while the others are hidden. As we code more and more scripts, I'll go through exactly what each sprite is supposed to do. Alright, let's begin coding. First, go to the stage. When the green flag is clicked, first we need to broadcast two messages and wait. Init numbers and then just init. Usually I would just have an init, but the additional message will help us a lot during the game reset. Great, now add a third message called start game. As always, this will actually set the scripts into motion for the primary sprite, which in our case is the T-Rex Dino. After receiving init, show and then go to the following position. This will be slightly below the floor and will allow us to create a nice running animation later on. Okay, now switch the costume to the idle one and then create a variable called bottom for this sprite only and then another variable called game over for all sprites. Bottom refers to the lowest possible Y coordinate of the cat. This will be the base above which the dino runs. After this, move on to the start game message. First, set game over to no and then get into a repeat until loop when game over turns to yes. This way, just modifying the game over variable by any sprite can cause the game to end. Each time, broadcast a new message called tick and wait. This will coordinate the sprite movements and animations all across the project. Great. We'll get back to the jumping in a while, first let's set up the dirt along the ground to make the game look cooler and more realistic. After init, we'd want to delete the existing clones, but since we can't continue the script after that, we put the block within a repeat 1. To distinguish between the clones and the sprite itself, create a variable for this sprite only called clone. Initially, set it to yes and then create a block called generate initial clones making sure to run without screen refresh. Within this block, we'll do the initial clone creation and positioning. But after that, we make sure to set the clone variable to no. Well, let's code the block now. First, show and go to the left end of the screen. Then, repeat until the X position is greater than 240, which is the right end of the screen. We have four different costumes of varying widths, so a random choice will provide a great look. At this point, create a clone and move X rightward by some value from 4 to 16. This will really create some variation. Lastly, for each clone, set the Y position to be a random value from negative 27 to negative 33. This will make the dirt more spread out and prevent all the clones from being in a perfect straight line. Wonderful, test it out and wow, the path is truly forged. The dino actually appears to be on some type of a plane. Even though it's minor, the dirt on the floor really adds to the character of the game. If you've got this working so far, then make sure to like this video. It's a small ask and it really helps out with the YouTube algorithm. Now, let's move on to the flow sprite. This is extremely simple to program. After init, show the sprite, then go to its location. And that is it. Let's get back to the dino to program the jumping script. That of course must execute during each game tick. There are two possible cases to consider. The dino may already be on the ground or it might be in the air. If it's on the ground, then we check if either the up arrow or the space key is pressed in order to allow for jumping. We need a variable to control the velocity of the dino as it flies, so create one called YVEL for this sprite only. We will only allow jumping if the down arrow key is not pressed, so that needs to be an additional condition. 
During this time, the dino should duck towards the ground. We'll do the costume changes later, this is just for your info. Anyway, here we will bump up the Y velocity to something like 18 and then change the Y position accordingly. Since we are now using the variable, we need to initialize it at the beginning to zero, otherwise there might be some abrupt motion at the start. Alright, getting back to the main script, we will move on to the last else case. Remember at this point the player is already in the air. If during the flight the down arrow is pressed, then we will set the y velocity to negative 20 so that the player falls downward really fast. Okay, after this we will do another check to see if moving by the y velocity would result in the dino going below the ground. This is a very real possibility. This is how gravity works. At the last game tick, the dino would sink below the ground instead of stopping on it. We will just set the y velocity to zero and move it to the ground. Lastly, we add gravity that would decrease the y velocity by negative two each tick and then change the y position in accordance with that velocity. And well, that is it. If you test the program, you should have a nice fluid jumping motion. This is really cool, and while there's still a lot of work to do, it is a fantastic start. With that said, thanks for watching. Make sure you leave a like if this helped you out, and until next time, peace out.